Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. They have very interesting review impressions of a QSP knife that was passed around in our um, group, our pass around group. And I believe this knife was provided to us by QSP. So thank you very much to QSP for allowing us to check this knife out. This is the Swordfish. It is a button lock uh, by QSP. I think it's their very first button lock that they did. Very cool little offering. I did enjoy this very much to try out. So I'm pretty excited about doing a review on this one and give you my thoughts on there. So the name of the knife is the Swordfish and the knife uh, design, I think it's an in-house design. Do not believe that there's a specific designer on this one. I could be wrong, but I didn't note that. Let's double check. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an in-house designer, I think. So correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody knows and you have some insider information. I couldn't find anything else. Um, it is QSP designed and manufactured, and so I, you know, they do a pretty good job. They're one of the better, if not one of the best, um, I'd say definitely one of the top tier uh, budget knife manufacturers out there in China. So, you know, you can get a good quality knife for a great price. That's that's what I'm trying to say. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about the handled materials. This is black and red G10. It is rounded, chamfered all the way around, so it's nice and contoured, comfortable. It's not a contoured handle, but it is chamfered and rounded on the edges, so let's make sure I clarify that. G10 has a steel liners. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy it. It's a thumb stud deployment. You can see that big, giant blade there. Uh, uh, steel, bar, uh, steel liners on the inside. There is some cutout for weight relief, which is really nice. It's got a G10 backspacer. This is a steel wire. Um, uh, deep pocket carry clip and you can see it is reversible so lefties rejoice it is left and right hand carry which is awesome right um, it does uh, it, it does um, what you can call it use this one is a t8 and this is a t8 but these are t6s which is kind of a bummer i wish these were t8s as well i wish you know just go ahead and make them all t8s that would have been nice um, you know it is what it is right it, it, it is a captive pivot which i enjoy it's got traditional um, you know qsp kind of uh, captive pivot um, screw there, if you will. That's kind of nice aesthetic. Has QSP here and the logo. I don't think that was necessary. 14C28N is perfectly fine. Great budget steel, by the way. So this is a, don't know if you want to call this a Warncliffe, you want to call this a modified, you know, sheep's foot Warncliffe, because it's a flat, so it's not really sheep's foot. And it's not really round, it's, but it is, you know, so we call it a modified Warncliffe, I guess we can call that. It is a big blade, and it's a very, very sharp, and it just nicked my skin off. Thank goodness it was just that. This is a really crazy sharp edge, which is fantastic, but it's just surprising how sharp that is. I mean, this is on the crazy sharp side of, of edge retention so really nice that's always nice to see beautifully rounded on the on the on the back spine of the blade has some jimping very functional jimping you can definitely use it i have large hands so large width wise medium length wise but large wise so extra large double extra large definitely have plenty of room on there i can't really choke up on the trigger area it's not big enough unless you have like super like if you had a maybe if your finger was just a bone maybe you can get it in there and you wouldn't worry about getting cut i guess right but um I don't think that's really a finger choil. It's more of just a sharpening choil, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the jimping is nice. It does work well up here. Thumb studs are in the cutting path, so just keep that in mind, you know, for better or for worse, right? It does have a long, long kind of tip there. It goes pretty thin out there, so it definitely has a good poking ability. You can definitely use that for precision cuts and stuff. Um, wouldn't use it for prying, obviously. But it is nice and thin. It's got a little swedge on top, so it's great for navigating the, the cut through. Uh, but it is a uh, stone wash, so that's great. Stone wash material on the 14C28, which is a great, great budget steel. And, you know, it's not going to wear out. And the nice thing about stone wash, if you get scratches, it kind of blends in really well. So it doesn't look like on a satin finish or a polished finish or, you know, black PVD. It doesn't stand out as much. So I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, now, is it more rusted and rust prone because there's little divots and nicks in there from the stones? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, some people are fans, some people aren't. Uh, but 14C28 is pretty corrosion resistant. So I think you're perfectly fine. Now, if you had 154CM, you know, some of the other steels that are uh, maybe not as corrosion uh, 3V or something like that, then, you know, you, you might be more, more concerned about that for sure, right? So that is the blade materials and the, the design. Let's talk about how it opens and closes. It is a button lock. It opens with the thumb studs. The button lock works pretty well. Thumb studs work pretty well. 
Um, I will say QSP doesn't quite have that nice, smooth, easy, comfort, comfortable deployment. Their, their button lock is pretty tight a lot of times. I still am recovering on this finger from one of their knives that I got that just destroyed my finger. That I was not really a, a super huge fan of because of that. And I don't know if that was one because it's first manufacturing run and I hope it gets better, but you know, it, it destroyed my thumb pretty well. So it, if you like super, super strong detent, you're gonna like QSP, you're gonna like their button locks. It, we call it detent, it's really plunge lock resistance because it's the plunge lock that's resisting the opening, which allows you to have that deployment, that actuation occurring. So it is, detent is kind of a generic term, but de, it's, de, detent's really specific to liner locks, frame locks, compression locks that have a detent ball and goes in a track. This is a plunge lock and it goes into a part of the groove of the knife. And so that's what resists opening, but it still allows you to break it so you can open it. And there's enough resistance so you can get a nice satisfying, you know, pop for the deployment. And that's, that's what that plunge lock does. But this is nice. You know, it does work pretty well. Uh, it does reverse well. I mean, it's, 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 it's definitely on the stronger side. Not quite my cup of tea, but I think a lot of people are going to love that, right? Uh, could you probably change that with softening the spring? Yeah, you know, sometimes you can straight, stretch, stretch out a spring that's inside the button lock and that can allow you to have a little stronger resistance and sometimes you can push it in, maybe compress it a little bit and it's a little less. So, you know, could try that if it's your own knife. This is a pass around, it's not my knife. I can't do anything to it. Uh, we leave it at is, as is and get the OEM experience for everybody, right? So, not bad, not bad. I mean, I think for their first attempt at doing a button lock, it's really, really good. So I think the opening and closing is really nice. I mean, you can do the button lock opening. Let's do this again. You can do the button lock opening and closing, right? So that's nice. And the, the flipper works well. I think it's it's better. Let me do that again. I think it's better as a as a light switch for sure. I don't think, yeah, the, the, the push button doesn't work really well. I think you'd really need to do a light switch. It def definitely fails if you try to do the push button. At least for me, it does, right? So I can't get it to, I have to light switch it. but. You know, that is what it is. Um, closes nicely with that button lock. Nice action. If you release it before, it definitely locks, engage, doesn't bounce. Does it have a little bit of rock? Yeah, this one does have a little bit of shake to it. Uh, and that's kind of typical with plunge locks. If you don't get it, that's always a nice treat. But this has the tr traditional kind of little shake in the in the in the closed position. So I call it plunge lock, you know, detent plunge lock rock. Uh, when it's fully engaged, it's fully engaged. There's no blade rock, there's no movement or anything like that so that's nice i like that um lock type is a button lock obviously and that works pretty well with the thumb stud so there is that it that button lock works so well i can't get my finger and do the middle finger flick it's just too strong i can't overcome that resistance of that button lock so there is that you know keep that in mind um let's do some measurements on this guy all right let's see what this weighs four point Three seven ounces, four point three seven ounces. So it's not a super light knife, but it's not a super heavy knife. It's pretty big. Let's measure this, and you'll notice that this is not a small knife. It's over. It's about eight, and I want to say eight and one eighth inches. Yeah, about eight and one eighth inches long. So it's a full size knife. So you know, at, at that length, at that weight, that's not bad. The overall handle length that you get for holding it, you're right at four inches. If you go all the way to the little curve here, you're about four inches. So definitely large, extra large, maybe double extra large hands for sure. I wouldn't consider that choil as part of the handle area at all. From the tip of the blade to the, to the blade there, we're looking at four and five, uh, three and five eighths of an inch. Excuse me, three and five eighths of an inch. Overall cutting length, we are looking at yeah, just under three and a half inches. I want to say just under three, right at three and a half inches, maybe three and I, I want to say seven, seven sixteenths of an inch, maybe three and seven sixteenths of an inch. It's just right under three and a half inches, right? So it's a pretty, pretty robust, big knife as far as that's concerned. Let's go ahead and measure the, the blade stock thickness. Let's see how thick this guy is. All right, so we're at 123, 124 thousandths of an inch, so 0 0.12, 0 
3.124 inches, so it's, you know, fairly average size, pretty thick. It's got a long blade, comes down to a thin edge, so that, that gives it a nice sliciness because it's a big enough, robust enough blade to come down to a thin edge. It does feel pretty thin. It will be, it will work pretty well, I think, as a, as a slicer for sure. It's not such a huge stock, and it's long enough that this will definitely be a good slicer. All right, so let's talk about the budget. The category, sorry. Uh, this is definitely going to be in the um, budget category of $70. I'm looking at $70.50 probably that's what we're looking at for this knife. So, you know, if you if you're if you're to go to like White Mountain Nines, use my code RNK10, you get 10% off and it probably be under you get about 7 bucks off of that, so it'd be $63. So you're looking between $63 and $70 depending on where you buy it. And if you use one of the coupon codes, I, it definitely puts it into the budget realm. So this is definitely a budget knife, well under $100. And I think that's pretty good, being that's 14C28N and G10 and a button lock, you know? And the size of the knife, that's, I think it's a pretty good deal. Is it, what, what I think about EDC? Absolutely EDC use. Hard use, you know, hard use for a button lock, maybe. But, you know, I, my, per, my perspective on button locks is they should never be hard use. You should get something that's a like scorpion lock, uh, you know, um, Shark lock, something like that, if you're going to use any sort of folding knife, that would be your best. Then after that, maybe a frame lock, compression lock, liner lock, you know, uh, but that would be it. In, in, in an absolute pinch, just realize real hard use is probably going to damage the knife. For true hard use, you want to get a fixed blade or an axe, you know, don't make it a pry bar, get a pry bar, right? But for EDC hard use, you know, opening, closing boxes, uh, packaging, letters, you know, opening cases of uh, dog food, cat food, maybe fertilizer, maybe, you know, um, yard seed, whatever, whatever you use it for, cases of water, absolutely, I think it would work great. Is it a collection piece? No. No budget knife to me is a collection piece, so this is definitely not a collection piece. You can make anything you want a collection piece, but I would not consider this a collection piece. The design. I think overall it's nice. It's got some nice big thumb stud areas. I wish the, the ramping of this was a little more gradual. It's got a couple of just like, you know, three drops, and it's pretty sharp. It's not as smooth as maybe like if you look at a Benchmade, you know, Benchmade seems to have a little more um, rise to it for sure. Uh, uh, this is, it, they're big, right? And so I would love to see maybe a couple extra, a, a couple extra grades as it as it levels up more volcano-ish. But, and, and then the placement of the studs is really close to the handle, right? And so the optimal, if you go up like that, it's more resistant than if you go here to the side. And and for that, I wish there was a little more curve drawing you in your finger in there to the more more optimal position, which is going to be there. It's okay, right? It's okay. It works. It's just I think this plunge lock is really tight. So I not it's not the greatest experience I've ever had. I think it's okay, right? Um, the the flipper works okay too. It you, you can't do the push button. It has to be a light switch. I don't know if it's just the dynamic, the blade being so heavy, or the resistance of the plunge lock pushing on the blade makes it a little harder to actuate it. I don't know, but I mean, if you do the light switch, it works perfectly fine, right? But if you try to do the, 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 the push button like this, it's gonna t tend to fail, and I don't like that. Thumb studs are okay, they do, they are pretty resistant, and you may, like I had some with some of the other ones that I had, uh, I think it was the Grieber or something, whatever. It was another one. I, that really destroyed my thumb. So this is close to pretty much almost being uncomfortable. So I don't know if that's just early manufacturing thing or if they get better. But um, I'm not a super fan of that. I, I've, I've, you know, CGRB makes one of the best button lock in the Pyrite. And this is, Pyrite is way better than this, okay? So because there's a better offerings out there, I'm not a super, super fan of this. I, I think it's cool that they're offering, and I think as they make this, they're gonna continue to improve, and, and maybe future variants are gonna be even better. I don't know, as they get their manufacturing down, but right now, I'm just, it's not, it doesn't jump out at me, okay? So, opening and closing works just fine. If you love this design, if you love QSP, and you're just a super fan, yeah, I think it's gonna be great. Fidget factor, you have thumb studs, and then you have the flipper, 
and you have the and you have the button lock if you can work it just right so you know that gives it a uh, because of how it works i'm giving it a six out of ten typically i would give this a seven out of ten six out of ten because i'm just the button lock is a little sticky the flipper is very limited in how you can do it and the thumb studs aren't the most comfortable so i'm going to give it a six out of ten for fidget factor they're not the best type of fidget factor experiences okay so fidgety goodness for what they are i'm going to give this a, probably an 80 maybe a 75 so it's going to be a c plus to a b b minus that's where i'm at with this that's my experience on it it's not terrible it works it functions if you love this maybe you like the stronger everything you're going to enjoy that yeah so this may be for you and the fact that it's a much bigger knife that may be for you as well but there are other offerings out there that i think do, does this quite a bit better so that's just my opinion on that i think it's good and, and i love i love cg i love qsp i do i have like all the I have all this, um, all my, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, not swordfish, but my, uh, my penguins. Yeah, I have all my penguins that I love. I love these. These are some of my favorite knives. I have a whole series of these. Um, and the swordfish, I guess, is sort of along the same vein, but it's not, it's not quite the same with their button locks. So, you know, I will tell you that I do enjoy that. I, I do. My overall thoughts on this. Uh, is it recommended? I'm not going to recommend against it, but it's not going to go in my recommended list. Okay? I'm not going to tell you don't get it. I will tell you if some of the things that are important to me are important to you, I think there's, there's better options. Okay? But if you love the design, you love QSP, and this really speaks to you for the size and everything, I think you're going to enjoy it. I think it's going to be a great knife, and I would say go for it. But if you find some of the things that I find important, you, you, I would maybe suggest look elsewhere. That's just my opinion. So in the end, it's not something I'm against. It's just something I'm not going to recommend. So that's where I stand on that. I think it was really cool to get to check out. I would love to see this design improve. There's some things that I recommended that I think could make this better. And so if QSP were ever to listen to me, T8s would make a lot of sense. Working on that button lock, a um, little better thumb studs, a little better angle to the thumb studs would be nice. Having a, a flipper that's a little better, and I think the reason why the flipper is lower than the pivot point, if you can make that flipper just go a little bit higher, somehow look on the on aesthetics, you know, because like if you look over here, when you did this one, the flipper is a little bit higher, so it does work a little bit better. And I could actually do the push button on this one, but it's that leverage you get. Here's the pivot, the center of the pivot. Here's the... Here's the, the uh, flipper so it is above the center of the pivot over here here's the center of the pivot it is well below the center of the pivot and so you don't get that leverage that you otherwise might get to it okay so just that is another thing and, uh, and uh, if you were to fix those things I, I think this could be a really fantastic knife but take it with a grain of salt you know I'm, I'm not a big enough channel maybe to them at this point so uh, may not be worth considering and, and maybe this is a design that speaks to a lot of people and so you know go for it maybe you have other variants in the future but and maybe that's the whole point of having my penguin i love my penguins those are great i have the the, pe the, the penguin the big penguin right the um i guess it's a big penguin i forget i can't remember what it's called the, and the mini penguin you know i love these guys i have all three of them and they're great 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 knives so there you go that's my thought on that all right, so let's take a quick close-up of this just so everyone can take a look at the knife. If you want to see if this aesthetic speaks to you, you want to get a nice close look up on it. Let's do the back side as well. You can see the clip, the reversible clip and everything, thumb studs. Really nice. All right. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the swordfish. Um, let me know in your comments down below what you think. If you agree, if you disagree, if you think I'm a complete idiot, or you like some of the things, or you don't. I love to hear from you guys, because you know what? We don't all have to agree on knives. It's perfectly okay. Maybe something I spoke about that you always think is important, and I don't, or something that bothers me is something that you love, you can learn from that. I, I do that with some, some uh, reviews. You know, I watch people who love super strong detents, and if they have a knife that they feel like it's medium to low detent, I'm like, oh, that's a good detent for me. And if someone who likes, like, no detent at all, and, and they say, well, this detent is uh, just perfect, I'm like, ooh, that might be too light, right? You know, things like that. You can learn from other people. You just got to know what are their aesthetics. What do they like? And, and you can 
maybe gain something from that. And I'm hoping that's what you have here. But I would love to hear from you and any questions about the channel. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. If you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button? Subscribing and liking the channel and the videos really helps out the channel. Allows the channel to grow, allows it to produce more content, ultimately do more things for you guys. I very much appreciate that. If you've done all that, maybe consider you know hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future content when uh, content is dropped. And then finally, maybe check me out on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.